In the modern day world, where the fuel prices are rising day by day and the increase of demand and less supply, it is important to choose cost-effective fuels to your vehicles according to your needs. Rudolf Diesel, the invent of the diesel engine, made a step to create an extremely efficient and cost-effective engine. Diesel fuel is of high energy density, which means more energy can be extracted via diesel compared to petrol. That is why it is used in heavy d to transportation and equipment where it can be used for higher mileage. Hi guys, today we will have an in-depth review on the diesel engine. To start off with, what are the differences in between a diesel engine and a petrol or a gasoline engine? In a petrol or gasoline engine, fuel mixes with air are compressed by pistons. The spark plug ignites the mixture to move the vehicle, but in a diesel engine, the air is first been compressed. The fuel is injected at the top and this is what makes the air hot. The fuel ignites when it is heat on the hot air, this makes the vehicle move. The question now is, which engine is better? Is the diesel engine or the petrol engine? Diesel engines are still more efficient than petrol engines, but not for those who are mostly engaged in city driving. Diesel cars have motor which would result in better fuel economy along with impressive acceleration. Today we will be looking at how the diesel engine works along with its parts and functions. First, let us look into the 4-stroke diesel engine. Similar to a petrol engine, a diesel engine also operates by repeating cycles of 4 strokes, namely the intake, compression, power and exhaust. Let us now look into the 4-stroke engine. In the intake stroke, the air is drawn into the cylinder through the air inlet valve on the right as the piston moves down. In the compression stroke, the piston moves up and it compresses the air mixture by heating it up. Fuel is injected into the hot gas through the central fuel injection valve and it spontaneously ignites. In the power stroke, as the air fuel mixture ignite and burn, it pushes the piston down, driving the crankshaft that would send power to the wheels. In the exhaust stroke, the outlet valve on the left will open to let out the exhaust gases pushed out by the returning piston, during which the piston would move up and down twice. Now we had a look at the four stroke engine. How does a two-stroke engine function? In the two-stroke engine, the cycle is complete as the piston moves up and down just once. It completes a power cycle in just two strokes of the piston. First, it is the intake stroke and the compression stroke. Then, it is the power stroke and the exhaust stroke. In the intake and compression stroke, the piston moves up where the fresh air enters the cylinder through an inlet port. After the intake process, the piston continues its upward movement and compresses the air and it heats up. Then, the fuel is injected and spontaneously ignites the air. In the power and exhaust stroke, the ignited air creates heat and high pressure gases exerting a high force on the piston and then the piston moves down slowly. The downward motion of the piston rotates the crankshaft that sends power to the wheels and as the exhaust valve opens, the piston pushes the exhaust gases out of the combustion chamber and the whole working cycle repeats. Two-stroke engines are smaller and lighter than four-stroke ones and tends to be more efficient since they produce power once during each rotation. This would mean that it needs more cooling and lubrication, suffering high wear and tear. Now let us peek into the different parts of the diesel engine and how they function. There are hundreds of components in a diesel engine. For now, let us discuss on the main parts. Starting off with the cylinder block. The cylinder block is the primary component to place various engine compartments that support the working process of the machine. The shape of the cylinder block would be more or less the same, but the details of it would be different. It is because its details are adjusted with all components that we stick onto this block. 
The cylinder block is made of cast iron which has a high degree of precision and strength. Inside the cylinder block, several components are placed namely the cylinder liner, water jacket and oil feed lines. The cylinder liner will serve as a place up and down the piston. The components are made of iron and aluminium alloy located inside the engine block using press method. So it is difficult to detach them. Water jacket which is located inside the engine block is the place where the engine cooling process takes place. The oil hole on the cylinder block serves to create the oil line. The piston and the connecting rod. The piston have a function to adjust the volume inside the cylinder. In this case, when the piston moves down, the volume of the cylinder will enlarge. The connecting rod serves to continue the up and down motion of the piston to the flywheel. In general, there are three co-parts on the piston attached to it. They are compression rings, oil ring and the piston ring. Compression rings are elastic function to prevent the occurrence of air leaks during the compression stroke. Oil ring, the ring printed under the compression ring, serves to prevent the engine oil from entering the combustion chamber. The piston pin, a pin located inside the piston to connect it with the connecting rod. This pin is tubular, when connected to the small end, it will function like a hinge. The crankshaft. A crankshaft is a mechanical instrument that transforms the reciprocative movement of the piston into the rotary motion. A crankshaft connects with the piston through a connecting rod. The main objective of the connecting rod is to reciprocate the movement of the piston that delivers into the crankshaft and it rotates the ring wheel, which further moves the vehicle. Crankshaft is made of cast iron and also with a special iron alloy that has a higher strength and anti-fastness. Some parts are attached to the crankshaft. They are crank pin which connects the big end of the connecting rod. Crank journal is a pin that serves as the shaft on the crankshaft. In order to spin, the crank journal will be attached to the cylinder block. Weight balance is located opposite to the crank pin. It functions as a counterweight as well as to drain the oil to enter inside the machine. Timing chain assembly. The timing chain is included in the valve mechanism system. Its function is to connect the crankshaft and claim the rotation with a certain angle. The component of this chain is located on the front of the engine. This chain will connect the sprocket gear from the crankshaft. Fuel injectors. Fuel injectors spray fuel into the car's engine using electronic control valves capable of opening and closing many times a second. They have a nozzle that distributes the fuel evenly for optimum combustion and efficiency. A car generally has one fuel injector per cylinder. So for a 4 cylinder car it would have more likely to have 4 fuel injectors. By injecting the fuel the system forces it into air that has been compressed to high pressure in the combustion chamber. So guys what are the advantages of a diesel engine? Diesel fuel gets greater mileage and delivers better fuel economy than petrol engines. It is one of the most efficient and energy dense fuels. It does not possess any spark plugs or distributors, therefore they do not need any ignition time-ups. Diesel engines are built to withstand high compression, so they usually last longer than the gas-powered vehicles. Even though there are advantages of the diesel engine, there are also disadvantages of the diesel engine. So guys, what are the disadvantages of a diesel engine? 
Diesel used to be more cheaper than petrol, but nowadays it costs quite the same. It needs regular maintenance to keep them running. The oil, air and fuel filters needs to be changed regularly. If you neglect the maintenance and the fuel injection systems would break down. Diesel mechanic would ask for more money to get things fixed because the diesel engine's technology are more advanced than that of petrol engines. We have come to the end about the today's video on the diesel engine. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Have a nice day.